Hello, my name is Mr. Chippen. I'm the AP biology teacher at Murray High School in Murray, Kentucky. And this is the night before the AP exam. And some of you are probably a little concerned. So we're gonna go over some chi-square. This is one of the things my students asked me to go over with them, just to double check the night before the test. And so we're gonna do that. Here's the chi-square equation. Here's another version of that equation. This is actually pulled directly off your formula sheet. So ignore standard error of mean. Just didn't wanna mess with it. I just kind of selected my screen and got it right off the formula sheet because this is what you're gonna be looking at. And so let's look at this together closely. Um, I'm actually, I'm gonna go up to this other one because well, no, let's use this one since this is what you're going to be using. So this is chi-square. Chi-square is the variable that you're solving for. This is not x squared. This is not a number that needs the square root taken of it. You are solving for chi-square, just as in this question you're solving for se whatever that is. Not important. All right, so when you get this number, don't take the square root of it. That's number one. The sigma means sum. What are you summing together? We're going to have a set of data, and you're going to take the observed data, this is the data that you're given, versus what you expect to happen. We'll talk about what the expectation is in a moment. You're going to square that, and then you're going to divide that by the expected. And you're going to do that for each data set, for each data point. And so if you have 10 data points, you're going to do that 10 times. You're going to add all those together, and that number is going to be your chi-square value. And you're going to compare your chi-square value to your critical value. Your critical value is going to be determined on this table right here. It's going to be based on a number of things. And so let's go back to my example, but let's say that I have five things that I have to add together. If I have five things, well, then I have four degrees of freedom, which is what I have here for degrees of freedom. How do I determine that? So the way that I think about the degrees of freedom is just this way. So let's say I have five, let's say I have five cards and I have five people sitting in front of me and I turn to one of them and I say, pick a card. They pick a card, they have a choice. I turn to the, the second one, pick a card. They also have a choice. Turn to the third one, there's three remaining cards. They pick a card. Turn to the fourth one, there's two remaining cards. They pick a card. Turn to the fifth one, Say, pick a card. They don't get a choice. There's no freedom in their choice because there's only one card left. So with five cards, there's actually only four choices that are made. And so when we're talking about degrees of freedom, we're talking about freedom of, the, of that choice, right? And so, so degrees of freedom is going to be one less than the number of things that you have available to you, whatever that is. And you're going to add all those together, your chi-square, and you're going to take your degrees of freedom. Let's go four is with my problem. And... It's going to, the problem's going to, the prompt is going to give you a p-value of 0.05 or 0.01. Let's just pretend it's 0.05, and my critical value is going to be 9.49, right? And so if my chi-square is under that, then I'm going to accept the null hypothesis. If it's over that, I'm going to reject the null. Let's talk about that. So the null hypothesis is basically saying that um, any, any, Derivation from the expected value is just random. Let me give you an example. Let's say that I have a bag of 100 M&Ms, and there's five colors of M&Ms in those bags. The company says that there's no, um, every, everything should be random, right? And so we could test the company's statement. And if, if everything is expected to be random, then there's five colors, then what would the thing be, right? It'd be 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Right? So that'd be the expected. That is the null. Well, and then we take 100 M&Ms and we actually count them. And we get, well, there's 18 green, 14 blue, so forth, right? Then we do a chi-square analysis on that. Each one, we take the observed, 18, the expected, 20. That's 2 squared divided by the expected, 20. You get a number. And you do that for each color. And your degrees of freedom, since there were five colors, is going to be 4. You're going to have a chi-square value. You're going to compare it to this critical value here, and you're going to compare it. If it's lower than the critical value, if your chi-square is lower, then you accept the null hypothesis and you say, sure, any, any change, any difference from the expected is random, meaning that this was random that this one got 18 and this one got 22, but it's close enough to the expected that we don't have to worry about it. But let's say that there were no green M&Ms, zero, and there were... 40 of another color, right? Well, 
that's going to give you a really high chi square value, and your critical value is going, or your chi square value is going to be way over your critical value. And when it's over the critical value, you have to reject the null, and you have to accept an alternative hypothesis. What does that mean? Well, you may come up with an alternative hypothesis. You may say, well, someone in the factory hates orange M&Ms. And that's your hypothesis. You could then go test that hypothesis. But you can no longer accept the fact that all colors are going to be equal in the bag, right? And so that's how you deal with that. Let's look at a problem. Here's a problem. I haven't done this ahead of time, by the way. I just threw it up there for all of our fun to see. Well, we have these parents. The expected results in this parents, this is uh, something that you should know. I'm just going to draw a quick Punnett square here for us and going to try to be neat. And the expected results are as follows, right? We expect to get 25% big R, big R, 50% big R, little r, and 25% little r, little r. Well, I have the results below. These are the results that we actually got, right? So these are three things. And so if I was doing my, if I was going to go ahead and find my critical value, if there's three of these, there's two degrees of freedom. And so my critical value is going to be 5.99, right? So we're going to use 0.05. Well, I can already tell this is going to be way off the expected, but let's go ahead and do the math. Let me pull up my calculator here. And so for the first one, it's observed minus expected. Observed was 27, right? So 27 minus 25, and that's going to be squared. Whoops, something wrong. 20 minus 25 equals, and that's going to be squared. So that's 4, and then I'm going to divide that by the expected. Divide that by 25. And then I get 0.16. And so I'm going to write down 0.16 here just for safekeeping. And then I'm going to do the next one. Well, this one also had 27, but the expected was 50. And so 27 minus 50 equals negative 23 squared. That is 529. Divide that by 27. No, wait. Divide that by 50. So was that 5 divided by 50? Because that's the expected, right? 10.58. I'm writing on a vertical surface, so I'm sorry. And on this one, my observed is 46. My expected is 25. Squared. Divided by expected, 25. 17.64. Wow, that's a big number, folks. And I'm going to take those numbers... And I'm going to add them together, plus 0.16, plus 10.58, and 28.38, 28.38 is my chi-square. I'm going to compare that then to my critical value. Critical value is much lower, or my chi-square value is much higher than my critical value. And so I have to reject the null. There's no way this is what I expected. And I have to come up with an alternative hypothesis. Something else is causing this pattern of inheritance, right? I don't know what that would be. I came up with these numbers literally off the top of my head. Why um, little r, little r would be, um, there'd be so many more of those. There's a lot of things. And the prompt, you know, a lot of times if you're asked, you know, predict a reason why this would be or suggest a hypothesis or something along those lines. And so there's, there's a number of reasons why this could be, and I would use your prompt. If not, just come up with something that makes sense scientifically. Um, but the meat of the problem is going to be what we just did. Uh, you could see this in FRQ. I've actually seen some chi-square problems in the multiple choice, and so be ready for that as well. Um, if it's in the multiple choice, it's probably going to be less figuring. Um, but again, you have a minute and a half to do a multiple choice, and this should not be a hard math for you. It's uh, can you subtract and multiply and divide and that's, you know, and then compare two numbers. Where people are going to get this wrong is just not understanding this formula and not understanding its connection to the degrees of freedom. You have a test tomorrow. Hopefully this was helpful for you. If it was, like this video, 
give me a comment down below. Tell me what you liked, what you didn't like, what I could do different in the future. I would really, really appreciate that. Subscribe to my channel. There's going to be a lot more things coming out. I actually have a whole zoology class, a whole anatomy and physiology class, honors biology as well. Enjoy my content. It's for you. Do a good job on the test tomorrow. I know you will. Thanks for watching.